We live in a culture now that is addicted to light. Estimates are that parking lots and gas stations are lit 10 times as brightly as they were just 20 years ago. There are more lights, and the lights that we have are brighter. Eight of 10 kids born in the U.S. now will never live where they can see the Milky Way. Light pollution has been growing at a rate faster than the population has been growing. In the U.S., over $3 billion a year is being wasted for bad lighting. And so that's lighting that's going that way or lighting that's going into your face and not lighting that's down where it needs to be. As lighting gets cheaper, people use more of it. And that's a problem. The short mission of the IDA is to work to try to reverse light pollution. Many people, I think, are really afraid of the dark. And so we maybe go to, to excess of what we need simply because there's a perception that more is better. The, the trouble is that very few people have experienced real darkness and seen a real night sky. How could you convince someone to save a forest who had never seen a forest? When you get to where there's no light around except what nature is giving you, the sky is amazing because there's stars everywhere. There's color in the stars. There's, there's so much range of brightness that you can see that the that familiar constellations can become lost because there's just so much there that you never saw before. What we learn in astronomical research is where we came from, how we came to be, and where we're going, really, how the universe is evolving. To fully understand our place in the world, we also need to understand, at least to some degree, the world's place in the universe. I think if we don't have an opportunity to gaze up at the sky, to see the many stars, then the questions don't arise. We can't actually go grab the planets and the stars and the galaxies and bring them into our laboratory. We have to wait for their light to arrive here and to be captured by our telescopes and instruments. In order to get enough light from these objects, we need a dark sky. The glow on the horizon from Tucson is getting larger. The glow on the horizon from Phoenix is getting larger. But overhead, the sky is still quite dark. That's because here in, in Arizona, there's been a very conscious effort for decades to protect the night sky. If you have polluted the ocean, it's a lot of work to clean that up. Light pollution can be just stopped by turning something off or putting a better shield on, on that lighting or changing the source of lighting. As technology changes and uh, new types of street lights come out, the LED is a very energy efficient source. And what Los Angeles has done and what other cities are doing is switching to LED. One of the good things about LEDs is that they tend to be far more directional and they don't shoot light in all directions, they just send it downward. To be human is to experience darkness. We've taken what was once one of the most common human experiences, which is walking out your door and coming face to face with the universe. And we've made it one of the most rare human experiences. For all of human history, until very recently, people could step out at night and, and see the amazing vista of the night sky. And that has inspired art and poetry and philosophy and religion and science for all of time, until really recently. It's gone now. The reason I'm, I'm doing this and the reason IDA exists is we don't think that's a lost cause.